Welcome back to another animation analysis and Disney just released the Encanto teaser trailer. And of course, you know what that means. I have to take a look at it because I love Disney movies and there's always a lot of fun in there. You can see I can scrub forward. So lots of prop animation, lots of powers and transformations. It's going to be so cool to go through frame by frame. And by the way, sometimes people are commenting that this is not analysis, it's a reaction. And then some people underneath, this is not a reaction, it's analysis. I'm basically having a lot of fun watching those type of things. And you know, the crazy thing is I would actually have a lot of fun animating this. I know it sounds crazy, but I love animating props and sets and all kinds of stuff. It's kind of cute that this is the variation of the Disney castle with the bling going around here. We have a look at, of course, I was going to take a look at the renders. You know this, if you watch this, I look at I think the renders. You can see a little butterfly here too. A little theme there, butterflies. Not much to see just yet. We see locales, although that is interesting too. Although I wouldn't like to animate this. That's a lot of work. <laughs> That's more of the effects theme. I can do that. Cool sets though. All right, so we got some title cards. This is what I wanted to look at. This, I love stuff like that. Come on, this is going to be fun. Now we're looking at where you got the controllers and all of this. You got the rhythm. Love having all of this. I would assume this would be all done by hand here. But I love stuff like that. Like I would actually even love animating just that whole shot. Just looks like fun. I know it sounds crazy. Like oh, I want to do character stuff. I want to do lip sync. I love it all. I love animation in general. But this is cool to look at that. You got the anticipation going up. Why? Because of the steps. Get a bit of a tiny compression in there. I like the little hang time and that deformation into this a little drag there into shoo, conveniently this being low enough for the foot to go in okay i'm gonna put on my super super picky hat here it would have been awesome to see ever so slight bending of those that would have been cool detail squishiness in the sole this is a Hey, look at that, all of that separately. Nice renders again. It's cute though. Nice grouping of fingers. You know I love finger animation. You can always count on fingers to be really well done in Disney shots. I mean, look at this too. This is a great example of contrast. That's your one pose, two fingers, thumb like that. Then you got taken from above here. Then you got two fingers, the rest of the group is down here. And then Two fingers here and a three there. Yep. Everything has contrast. Ooh, that's your weight assignment right there. Whoa. Cool stuff though. An ever so slight asymmetry. You know, even if the direction is make it both the same, there's still going to be a slight difference. You can see a slight tilt in the head as well. It's a little bit slightly higher than this. You got the uh, butterfly theme again. Bam! Even this, now you can see even more. Now that she lets go, you can see how this arm is lower than the other. So this is obviously for anybody animating this. This makes sense in terms of, you know, whoever is for sure <laughs> animated this on the movie, but, but animators with experience. But, you know, all of these clips are usually for, for new animators, my FNAs or students, but... This is where you put in, you know, even if it's a subtle amount of asymmetry, just that contrast with the shoulder lower, uh, the shoulder lower here, that, you know, as you have this lower, this up, you have a tilt in the head. And then on something like that, you got the simplified arm shapes just to make it readable. Less is more. You got all that again. It's cool too. You can see the ripple in the plants, the pots and everything. And even this, look at this pose, right? You got your... Anticipation going up, even that all asymmetry. You got that going up, and then bam, you got the change here. It's great. Yeah, even like you know, teaser trailers, you learn every shot. If you're new to animation, I'm telling you, go through teaser trailers, trailers, analyze everything. And then we got a first look at creatures. Creature animation. You can see here how even on a turn like this, you're going to have changes in the paws. You can see how this side goes out of it. I always love... I know, if you ever watch my stuff, if you're not bored by now, <laughs> I always look at toes and just compression and just the weight transfer. It's always interesting to me 
You can see little tiny details of that movement. It's great. Lots of detail. Nice clean poses. Oh, now it gets complicated. I love it. Look at this. I was watching this going, all right, I want to go through this frame by frame. Look at that. That's it. I mean, imagine this is your assignment <laughs> or just a shop for your reel, right? Let's watch this. You get all of this and then the amount of contrast. You're going with human with mechanics on knees and turning with contrast of a ginormous creature and then a tiny creature and then all of these. These guys are so cute. And then you got bigger flying creatures with different wing mechanics. <laughs> I like this guy coming out. That's cute too. Look at that. All the different placement again for contrast. Slightly bored there. Cute faces. Look at this. And then, of course, anybody can go in there and look at details for that. I'm sure there's some Easter eggs somewhere. It's all very, very cool. Look at nice that tiny, tiny movement in this here. But I think cool too. Uh oh, critical hat is on. That's cool too. Like this is your awesome weight mechanics and just general body mechanics assignment, right? Even for contrast, how they both go up differently, different type of posing right there. And then you got whoop, this happening with a bit of weight, push up, hang time and drop. Like all of that is not easy to animate. Think of the contrast in terms of how they go about this. She slips more like this. And then landing with that. That's a really fun idea for just complex mechanics. Again, watch this in real time. How long is the shot? Ready? And it's not that long. Short and sweet. You got so many complex mechanics in there. Bam! Especially this. This has a really nice feel of landing. And then that drop. You can see that nice drag and curve. And you can see this. As the body stops, head and arms, that momentum has to continue. Comes in. You can see that little stretch too and then settle in the head. It's great. Even here, going back, asymmetry. Okay, I'm gonna put on my critical hat. This is gonna be crazy. I put those fingers out there for a cleaner silhouette so it's not so stumpy. This is probably the most critical I have ever been of someone else's work and I feel bad. Oh, so good though. Yeah, look at that. Even have here, a little bit of a foot roll. Tiny detail. So as you have your weight shift, all of that. And there's an overall lean this way. So your rotation is going to be this way, pivoting off of here. Well, that's great. I'm going to turn like that. You got a, a quick adjustment through there. Telling you every shot you can learn. It's so good. And you can see that too. Just in terms of body shape changes. I love that how they are completely used to all of this. This is apparently a magical, as it says here, magical place. So this is completely normal. So this was cool. I really want to see this frame by frame. So she or it transfers. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. Body first. Into that. I mean, that is a fun shot. Let's watch this. This is a longer shot. Probably if you watch this uninterrupted, you'll get some copyright strike or something. But you're going to have, besides background stuff, you have mechanics, which... You might even go backwards a bit and you could have someone go downstairs. You got foreground elements with different walks because it's different sizes, different ages, right? Then you got scale difference, transformation, which would be a lot of fun to animate. Then you got a different character with a different kind of walk. And then again, let's go through this here and pops over one frame, but this is fairly similar. It's awesome. Going up, look at that, how the head kind of stays put and squashes through there into this. That's awesome. <laughs> These are funny walks. I like that walk. But then you got the mechanics of stairs up. Then you got that. We are going head first there. So much fun. All the claw sells it too. But then you got that. That's also fun. You got the mechanics of the walk with extra weight on top. And just kind of the bounciness there. Another walk again. This is so complicated. I feel bad for whoever animated this. So much work. Got your nice stretch, squash with a drag. Look at that stretching of the skull. Transforms through the blur. <laughs> nice hold there. But even here, you can see the elasticity and just the stretchiness here of the head. It's awesome. And even that on the slap, she blinks. Come on, so many awesome details. More powers. That's 
you know, do not underestimate someone holding on to this and having to do a swing. It's your uh, pendulum assignment again. All right, and here we have a look at the character without powers. Definitely, um, maybe it's the butterfly, cocoon butterfly changing theme, because there are butterflies everywhere. It's cute design, though. Even this here, watches in real time. It's probably not that long, right? And boom, look at that. Short and sweet. This is what I would, would uh, recommend to my students. So you have, right off the bat, you got a cool pose. This is what I talked about in my animation mentor QA actually just yesterday. Frame one. Like imagine this is your shot. Frame one. You got a nice line of action. You got asymmetry in the face. You can see this here. You got a grouping of fingers, really nice clear pose, compression there. Like this is a really fleshed out pose. And I recommend doing that on frame one on, on your shots, any shot. Because to me, when you do something like this, you get to see the appeal of the character. You know how much you can push the fingers, the body, just is, is this is gonna work. And then as you continue, imagine this is your shot, awesome pose, and then the rest is all crappy. As it is, because you're blocking things out, it's rough. But you can always go back to frame one to see this is what it could look like. This is what it's going to be. But also, it's kind of the guide of this is the state of mind of the character. And as the shot progresses into contrast, you're gonna, it's going to end up somewhere else. But it's just a reminder of where you're starting, what the character can look like, the appeal of everything. But also for students, like the amount of work you have to put in and bendbows and shapes and just the line of action, just everything. Are you going to put that much effort into every single frame or at least major pose and breakdowns? Maybe not every single frame, but probably every single frame. But you can see here all the changes, nice poses there. That's what we talked about in the class. You got your wash, wash stretch, like that we still see the eye there. But that as assignment is cool because you got a, it's almost like a gear change assignment and a weight assignment packed into one. And you can see how she will grab that and then this will stop. It's gonna rest on her torso and her hips. The hands are stopping this. And then you got a bit of a offset in the head. It's great. Put a critical hat on, on this, putting up and squeezing. It'd be nice to get a, a bigger squeeze on the finger. Squeeze. I love finger stuff though. It's a great shot. Come on, look at that. It's not long. You can show off a ton of stuff. And I love that you have that as a foreground element. You got a nice background like this. This is really not super long, but a great exercise for people. But people, I mean, students would be great. Awesome. I love seeing all those different character designs. <laughs> you got an awesome face. Look at that curvature in the head here. You can see all the asymmetry opening up the face. Looking this way. I mean, all these characters. It's great. Butterfly. I don't know why, I guess the theme is butterfly from my analysis. It's cute too, look at that pose. You can tell slightly awkward, the face. Oh, how long is this? Let's see, and again, short but sweet. I mean, you look at this here and clearly the weight is working. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously the Disney animators, of course it's all gonna work, but I'm just saying, you don't have to do a 20 second long shot. I say this and I'm guilty of this all the time, butterfly. But you got a nice off balance pose. Let's go through there again here. All right, you can see this all the way here. And then she starts to change. It's great. Look at that. And you got that for balance. She has to go out. And again, this is what I talk about in terms of um, balance. I had a clip about that somewhere on my channel where you put your leg this way. The leg has to be pointed this way to push this way. If someone is off balance, like here, you cannot plant the foot underneath or here because then there's no opposing force to stop that fall. Now, if it's too much, like in this case, there's still enough of a stopping this way, but you can still take another step to then rest. Well, this is a great example of balance. And also, just to make this more complex, you got those guys in the background playing instruments. Again, I feel bad for everybody doing all of this accurately. Short and sweet, you got a little reveal of her. Oh. It's a great shot. It's nice. Always very appealing characters. Got your squash and stretch in the face. You got asymmetry. You can see just the way that you don't see the upper part of the teeth. Probably rotated teeth back. So it's just a cleaner shape. You got the darkness here and just the shape of teeth without getting on onto all the the details. 
just gives it more of a, a graphic appeal. But again, asymmetry in the face. A lot of times with eyebrows, those thick eyebrows, you're going to definitely see that. Something like that, you get all this nice cloth and hair sim too. But it just has a nice feel too. And again, that's your gear change assignment, right? That's one emotion. Here's something and... And you got the eyes going first, even the right eye more than the other. Because there's something stimulating her, caught, catching her attention into that. And if you track the nose, you can see the arc in this. So great. <laughs> Support. Wonder if that is Sims or animated by hand. Because you never know. But again, that's your another way to Simon, right? You can see just a little bit of detail of the weight coming off with the bouncings in the flesh. But, you know, this would be something. And that's actually a cool idea, too, that the object, the weight is too high. So the character has to go on their toes. It gets a bigger stretch into this, into that, into that lower balance stance there. That's actually a cool idea. I like this. I'm going to steal this one of these days. If I do something like that where the object is too high, so the character has to get on their toes. It's nice though, also nice rhythm. You got the lift, settle, pause, and then go. Oh, nice, look at the head accent, and beep, 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 beep. It's great, love that. Ah, so good. I think the theme is short but sweet. Again, play this in full time, in real time. Not long, but you're having a weight assignment. You're having thought process, facial expression, lip sync. And then mechanics of a slight turn and walk. This is complex stuff. This is not easy. It's great. Nice hand poses there. That'll contrast in just how they're all standing and looking. Love the outfit. I love her. She's already great. As you can tell, I'm already fully in. That's your other weight transfer, right? A weight assignment doesn't have to be always picking up something. It could also be someone is holding something heavy and giving it to someone else. So as the weight gets released this character could bounce back in a specific way this character has to hold on to something really heavy it's cool I like that idea as a, as a variation for weight and then you got your nicely formed finger poses here as always asymmetry in the face this would be a good uh, exercise for people to uh, for students to look at so in terms of the blinks like how long do you hold your head turns how does the head stretch and have the line of action within the head. How the corners are rounded, maybe ever so slight. It's great. Also head accents. Look at that, a nice shape there. Detail on fingers. Then you got your thought process and realizing things, how it starts off in the eyebrows and in the corners here, and then oh, into that. Oh, that's a great shape, look at this. Telling you frame by frame. Ooh, I love this too. How that hand has that curvature down into a nice simplified shape. Always got the triangle shape in there. Into the expansion, into that. That will settle. Doing with a slight hair sim too. So good. That's your help pose with a slight change. Even that, it's nice. You get your thanks. You got the S with the closed mouth. You got the slight. Again, asymmetry. She has the weight here, so she has to lean over for the balance. It's great. Even so, something like that. Short and subtle. That's nice. This is for you, for you as in the students. Go through there and see how you blink. You get a little bit of movement already. Ever so slight ease in. Then we're not completely halfway. We're slightly higher. Then you get your compression squish here. You can see how it changes, how we're closed, but it still continues here. And then you ease out of that. An interesting shape. Look at that. Everything is sculpted. It's so nice. But even here, you can see the difference in size. You're still going to have asymmetry. And then as it ends and eases in, it doesn't, bam, it doesn't mechanically just suddenly stop. It eases in a bit. And then the movement continues on in the eyebrows. So nice. And then as this goes up here with the jaw, it pushes up the, the cheeks. You can see the lower lid here going up for a slight push. All of that is pushing up. 
so good I'm telling you every time frame by frame you can learn so much all right presents oh boy complicated mechanics that took a long time i feel bad we ran animates this here unless it's like all right season anime you're doing this and maybe this okay interns maybe this another intern just do that i don't know i don't know how it's broken up <laughs> this guy's really into it with the bird i love it all right we got dancing animals <laughs> that's an awesome face to share look at this <laughs> nice. That must be heaven for any type of person doing the simming. Cloth and hair. It's like, all right. Can't wait to see how that turns. Now, if you're doing this, I would assume, for us at least at work, when we have something like this, right? And you only have that curvature of the cloth and then finishing, we would have to do what's called pre roll. So this would be 20, 30, 50 frames of actually animating backwards. So it's not, this is the first frame of animation and then go, because then the cloth would just be hanging. And then it would just be, you know, drooping and then getting pulled. So in order to have this already happening, you're going to have to have free roll with the animation going backwards a little bit so it, the sim can start somewhere. I mean, again, anybody doing this will know this. Anybody not knowing this, this is why I'm saying this. It's great, though. Nice dance. Look at the finger poses. Got your grouping there. I love to say grouping. Nice. Look at that. Just the changes. In the arm shapes and then with the drag. Oh, so great. And even as this hand holds, it's still there. It still has the rhythm of the body in there. Just look at just that move. Ready? And and oh, so good. What is this? I'm gonna say butterflies? No, no butterflies. We get original songs. That's another one where you can just go. Ooh, half blinks. Nice. It's not everything has to be a blink. Eases into the stretchiness. Now there's not too much to see there, but I love the look of it. Peeling characters. So we got you know all the contrast in the background characters. Holy moly. I've watched it. These are only ones, by the way. That's why I'm still going, what is all this here? Frame by frame. Again, that's a ton of work. There's not much to analyze. I'm just more in awe in terms of the renders and the look. That's when it goes into a reaction and not an analysis. <laughs> Whoa, I'm looking at this here though. Look at that. Ready? And going to the side. So you're going to have to have be the path animation. Again, I'm always curious. One person animating this and then someone else is doing all the creatures. At ILM, this would be everything. You have to do everything. This is not too crowdy where you have thousands of other characters. So we will be in charge of everything and not just foreground background um, division. Unless, I don't know, unless we're running out of time and schedule wise, we're being forced. Like all of this, we're always in charge of everything on screen. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Same with this here. Thankfully short for whoever has to animate this. But you get to see the up and down and how the character reacts on that. That's also fun. So imagine doing your creature animation and you're fairly comfortable with it. Let's add a character on top or another creature on top, whatever, just to get that added complexity of how they react, right? So as this, this is the driver and this is the, the character being driven. Be interesting to animate. Cool sets though. What is this movie going to be? And where are we at? Is at the end? Oh, we got more. Again. The balance, right? You got this hanging, so she has to kind of lean over this way. Very close to the girl. <laughs> she is not phased at all. It's like, all right, it's close to my face. What's going on here? Oh, nice. Okay, let's watch this in real time here. You got the lean back, swing. Oh, I love this. All right. This is where I'm always hugely into head accents. And I love this because the character cannot gesture. Students do a lot of gesturing. You would have your W pose or, you know, if it's like this, the hands fan out, either one arm or both arms. There's always too much stuff happening in arms. I love this because she can't do anything with arms because she has to hold this. It's great. Character is forced into body movement and head accents. Now, take a look at just the head. Ready? And 
That, that, that. Oh, that ends. All right, all right, come on. Let's go back here. Just analyzing the head. So you got your little down compression squash, a little bit of stretch. You got the lead with the rotation and the translate out, right? It's almost like this head is, oh, this head is only one head here. Stretches this way and then takes the body with it. It's leading here. Yeah, it goes over there. As this settles, you got the weight transfer, kind of slight rotation there. Then you can see slide down over. And again, transfer this way. This goes this way. Hold a bit. And then you got that little swing into that. And then wait for it. I love stuff like that. Look, even this here, you got that move. This is what I was talking about to the students. When you have jaw movement, it's still going to move your head a little bit. Yes, there's some ambient movement because she just finished a bigger move. But it's always odd to see a face in terms of the head rotation. No movement locked. And then ton of facial stuff in terms of jaw movement and just facial expressions there. Right? Especially in the lower side. So when you have stuff like this, it's great. Even here, you got the jaw going down. With a slight rotation this way, but still the head is still reacting to the jaw movement. It doesn't always have to be crazy, but this has just enough really nice subtle move. Ooh, I love this here too. With the slight anticipation to the left, then into this. And I love that. Just that little head shake. Got rotations in Y and in X as well. It's great. Just, just enough. You see the squishiness in the face as this shape goes over. How it squishes the nose. Watch the nose here. You can see how fleshy and squishy it is. But you still got asymmetry here in the whole shape and the line of action there. Look at that. Oh, so good. Come on. Let's watch this again. Just that section here. And oh, love that. That to me is so much more interesting than arm gestures. There, I said it. I said it. And of course, you'd still have to do all of these guys. The contrast of when are they looking? Again, this is for students here. Go through their frame by frame and look at how do they blink. I mean, you can do like a, it's not a nervous blink. It's not a, a shocked blink. It could be a normal blink. You know, just looking like what is she looking at? How many frames does it take for a close? How many frames does it take for an up? And then go from there and kind of, my thing is always look at what other people are doing, right? Copy that, see how it feels. Learn from it. Obviously, don't replicate it and just copy stuff all the time in your shots. But you can have your library of a sad blink, a happy blink, a nervous blink. And how does that... Like, this obviously looks all really great. So then you can start looking at, well, what does that mean? Why? How long? How many frames? Why does it look great? Ah, uh, and then go from there. It's always good to reference other stuff. <laughs> this cracks me up already. Here you can see all the different... Right there. Everybody has their powers. It's almost like a tentacle thing here. I'm looking for, uh, uh, what's it called? Butterflies. No butterflies. <laughs> Look at that too. That's awesome. Leans on there. Different pose. Hanging here. Okay, hanging here, but then arms together here. Like every character is different. Come on. See, that's what I mean in terms of just time and effort. Again, my Q&A yesterday. You have something like this. You really have to think about posing every character differently. The expressions. Look at that. Everything has their own contrast. She got a little bit of widening here. It's awesome. So much detail in there. It's basically everybody's in awe, right? How can you make this different for so many characters? It's like a, this is a pose challenge more so than an animation challenge. It's great though. Come on. <laughs> this is me this morning, quarter to five. I did set my alarm to work on my workshops. But that's literally the face that I had. I also have a biggerish nose, so this is literally me. I'm also slightly hairy. All right. Who looked at me for reference? Here again, you can see your stretch into this. This really helps a lot. I love hair sim. As the character settles, you got that extra movement there. Watch this in real time. That's what's going on here. And, and you can see the force of this. It's not physics as in... I'm throwing myself up, body, head, and arms, and just let myself droop. She is really in distress. So you can see how the timing is pushed. How she's pulling herself down. Watch this in real time again. And for that extra yeah, emphasis on, on how she feels. Although, if I would wear glasses, I would be very careful putting hands on my face. 
This is uh, nicely hidden here. This would hurt. Also, the hands are not close by. It's also a bit more up and to the side, but something to consider, to consider when you have props. How is the character going to touch their face with ginormous glasses? Again, here you can see nicely hidden the top side of the teeth. So it's a bit just more shape. It's a very clear shape. If you look at this here, and you got the teeth line here. It's really great. Again, asymmetry in the face. There's so much to learn from all of this. And, ah, it's over. Anything else? Nope, that's the date. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Yep, you know what I'm going to say. I'm in. By the way. All right. Veteran animator, animate this. Hi, intern. <laughs> you got to do this in the background. Uh, but come on. You got to learn the pipeline. You got to put in maybe some cycles or something. Totally normal. And no butterfly at the end, except on a costume. All right. Well, that is that. I hope this was not super weird or boring. I have a lot of fun watching these. Even like stuff like that. Yeah, you get to see this here, asymmetry in that. There's always something telling you. Any student, go look at trailers and teaser trailers and just frame through it. There's so much you can always learn. But that is that. I hope that was somewhat entertaining, educational, whatever you got out of this. I am in. Of course, I want to see the movie. And that's it for my analysis slash whatever reaction review whatever whatever you want to call this but thanks for watching that is that from me and i will see you in my next upload